Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop and today we are making a mallet. Yes, another one, but this time with rosewood and walnut. Let's dive in. Today we're going to be working with walnut. This is a block of walnut I purchased a while ago. I was going to make a small bowl out of it and I actually got it from uh, Bell Forest. It is a bowl blank that is six inches by six inches by three inches. And I need a head that is six inches by three inches by four inches. So we're going to plane down one face of it and then use that to parallel mark off how far in we want to cut four inches down from the top. Once we cut that through, then we can plane the rough sawn face uh, to be parallel to the first side that we cut in. And now it's starting to look like a hammerhead. That's about my favorite shape is four inches tall, three inches thick, and uh, six inches across. I'm going to use my bevel gauge to mark off what is that angle. And then I thought, wait a second. I want to see what my, this is the hammer I use all the time, the mallet, and these two angles are actually different. Um, they don't match. Um, so you don't have to be dead on exact. I, I usually just eyeball it and say, I want an angle about that. Uh, and that's what I do. I draw it down one of the faces and then I draw that line across either edge. And then we can just play connect the dots and cut the line between it. I'm going to use a hard point saw in here because it cuts really fast cross cut uh, and it leaves a relatively rough cut but that's okay because we're going to come back and plane it up no matter what. We're going to use a low angle plane to plane off the face and as long as you plane in from the outside to the middle you'll get a really nice jointed face. I, I could put it on the shooting board but it's too thick to fit into that and so as long as you plane into the middle without going out the other side you get a really nice clean jointed surface. For the handle, we're going to be using Bolivian Rosewood. This is a lot of fun. Very, very heavy-duty stuff. Uh, now, it's not the endangered uh, Brazilian Rosewood. Uh, this stuff is far more readily available and uh, sustainably resourced. But we're going to cut the handle about uh, that long. How long is that? Somewhere around 16 to 18 inches. Um, I never measure it out. I just go about that long. That looks about right. And uh, we're going to mark at the top of this an inch and a half and at the bottom three quarter. So the handle is three quarter inch thick and at the top it's inch and a half and at the bottom it's three quarter. And then we can draw a line between those two marks and rip it down. Once we get this cut out, then we can come in and smooth it off. And this tapered handle ends up being the wedge that holds it all together. So the more you swing it, the more the head slides up onto that wedge and locks itself in place. And it really makes for a very strong head. You don't have to worry about any uh, wedges or anything else holding it. If you ever want to, you can tip it around and knock it out. And you have a handle you can quickly pull out of the head. It's a really cool design. and works very well. I want to mark out where the center is on the face of the handle up near the top. And so I put two marks on it, play connect the dots, and draw a line between those two. I'm going to do the same thing on the face and then line up those two center lines. And that lets me know exactly where does the handle interfere with the mallet. And then I can draw those lines across the face. And you can see how these are not parallel. They're actually slightly out of a skew to match the angles. I can draw those lines then on to the top and bottom of the head and uh, draw the hole on the end of where this mortise is going to be. Now I'm kind of rushing through this because I've done a bunch of videos on this topic before and if you really want to I've got a, a really detailed video on how to make a mallet. Uh, if you want an incredible amount of detail I would say go over to Paul Sellers. He has a I think it's a three video long series where he goes into great detail in making a joiner's mallet. Uh, it's basically the same procedure. We do a few things a little differently um, but uh, he has a, a really good tutorial that goes into an amazing amount of uh, detail detail in making a mallet. And there's a reason why I like making these. It's a great project that you can do fairly quickly and it's a good way to stretch your skills and try something. And it's a uh, just a fun, easy project that most people can do in an afternoon. Once we get most of the material moved out of the morris, I'm going to come in with a file or a rasp, or in this case a small float, and detail out any little bit that's stuck in there, anything that's sticking up that will interfere with the handle going in. And then we can try sliding the handle down in until we get a good fit. We want to slide it down until there's about an inch and a half or so sticking out at the end. In this case, I've got about an inch sticking out, which is usually a little bit less than I want, but that's not a problem. I want to mark on the handle where it interacts with the head and then once I take the handle out I know how far up I can start shaving away. Uh, so I'm going to use the spoke shave to come in here and because I'm taking fairly deep cuts in I'm going to be using a round bottom spoke shave. I'm going to remove most of the material and get it feeling good in the hand. 
I'll chamfer up the ends because I love the look of a chamfer and it stops them from splintering out in the future. I'm going to do that on both ends and kind of clean them up. You can come in with a file or a rasp and do it much quicker and easier, especially with this really, really hard wood. Uh, the rasp does a very fast job of it, whereas the plane uh, is a little bit more rough. So I can come in with the rasp, take off most material, and then hit with a file and smooth it down. Now we're going to do the detail work, and we're going to smooth out the plane and get it nice and pretty. All those marks that we made on it, we're going to remove those, and any of the wax that's left over from the, the drying process, we can shave that all down. And I want to do some carving on this one. This one is actually going to uh, a friend of the channel who is trading me some irons for it, and so I'm going to do something a little bit different and fun on it. He said, you know, do whatever you want to do on this, and I'm going to do a design that I really like on this. But before we do any of the carving, I need to chamfer the corners so I know where the pattern goes. This is just a random pattern I found off of Google, and I used um, Microsoft Paint to adjust its size. Uh, Microsoft Paint is an, an amazing tool that just allows you to adjust and print things to a specific measurement very quickly and easily. And then I can come in with my V-tool and carve it out. Now, this is a step that really scares a lot of people, and it's one of these things of, oh, no, I don't know if I can really do that. Honestly, most people can pick up this skill in about five to 10 minutes of practice. Yes, there's some people it's gonna take a little longer, but most people can get it. If you can follow a line with a pencil, uh, you can do this with a V-tool. It doesn't have to be anything amazing, but you can do some really, really cool work on it. And then I'll put my logo in the middle and uh, carve out the, the W's on it. Now, carving the circle is actually probably the most difficult thing in this. Carving an accurate circle is very, very hard because your eye will pick up any inconsistency in it very quickly. Uh, but after that, we can scrape off the pattern and start doing all the finish. There's always a little bit of uh, the pattern that gets stuck in there. Most of the time I end up scraping it off, but in this case I didn't want to take off too much more because some of the, the lines were getting a little bit thin. Uh, but I usually uh, like just scraping it off because the next thing I'm going to do is scrape the surface and getting ready for finish. Then I'm going to put on a little bit of alcohol to clean off any gunk that's still stuck in there. And of course, what are we going to finish this with? But boiled linseed oil and paste wax. Why those? Because I, I love the feel of it on a hand tool. Something that goes in your hand and you get to feel it. Um, actually, feeling the wood is it, it's very tactile and very comfortable. And a simple boiled linseed oil finish, let it soak in and you get the colors coming through. And it's just, it's beautiful and it's warm and there's something very tactilely, tactically, ta something very enjoyable about it. After the oil has had a chance to soak in, I'm going to hit it with the paste wax. I'm going to let the paste wax sit on it for a few hours and then come off, polish it, and it's done. And just like that, we have a functional mallet that will work for many, many years to come. And I really like how this one came out. Uh, the design on it is simple, easy to make, and just really eye-catching. Very, very happy. <laughs> So there you have it. Uh, I know, I've been making a few mallets recently. It's kind of become the, the de facto payment system I have. Uh, if someone has something they want to trade with me, I make them a mallet. Um, but I probably won't be making many more of them. So if you want a mallet, I'm sorry. But yeah, this one is actually going to a friend of the channel who is trading me a set of irons for the Stanley 46. So I hope you like it. And this is the Walnut Head and Bolivian Rosewood. And Bolivian Rosewood is different from Brazilian Rosewood. Brazilian Rosewood is the stuff that is uh, um, currently... Um, it, you don't want to work with it because it's very endangered. But, but the Bolivian rosewood is uh, readily available and a, a good tree because it regoes relatively quickly. But it's an incredibly fun wood to work with because it's very dense, very hard, and leaves you with a really nice shine on it. And I am I'm, I'm loving this one. This is a, a good time with the carving on here, enjoying the pattern, and uh, just having a, a good time with the mallet. So if you have any thoughts, questions, ideas, let me know that down below. If you'd like to see other videos where I make other mallets, I've done this design several times as well as many others. I, I've made lots and lots of mallets over the years, and every one of them has a different use and a different function. So if you want to see that, I'll leave a link to the playlist with all those down below. But if you have any questions, thoughts, ideas, throw those down below as well. And thank you. That helps out the channel. Anytime you comment, like, share, subscribe, uh, you know all those things. And people say it all the time, but it really does help out the channel. So if you, if you just put comment down below, down below, thank you. But if you really want to be amazing, beautiful, gorgeous, and one of those benevolent people who are listed over here, think about becoming a patron on Patreon. Because between patrons and members, uh, those are the people who've clicked the, the join button down below. You guys support this channel. We are com mm. We are completely sponsored by you, and I really like that because it allows me to do what I want to do rather than what some company wants me to show off in their tools, so I don't have to bust in and create an ad somewhere through. 
So if you like that, then think about becoming a patron or member, and I think that'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Walnut is a very interesting wood. It's actually relatively hard to come by because you have to find a, a vertical hard surface that's a bit crazy. It's wall that's nut-y.